this is not a video that is trying to start some sort of dough war. I use this and you suck because you use that. This is a list of five things why I really enjoy using Reaper and what it brings to the table for my own workflow. Reaper is a different DAW and you might want to look into it. My name is Juanchis and we will be talking about why you might be interested in trying out Reaper. Maybe the most natural thing that I can think of is how to make a send from one channel to another. Let's suppose for a moment that I just want to send this track 31 to track 32 for whatever reason it is and I just have to click drag and drop and it's done. I don't have to go through some strange menu doing strange things, right clicking and looking for it, it just does it. And, and even when your sessions grow a lot and you're trying to reach, for example, track 42, that might be further to the right or the left or whatever, you can just right click and go to send destination track and it will take you there. I really like how Reaper makes me think in an engineering way for certain solutions. For example, the routing matrix helps you make sends and returns really fast. A small extra is that maybe when I'm trying to explain signal flow within the classroom, it's easier to explain what's happening with pre-fader, post-fader, using the track wiring diagrams, or even just to talk about sidechain routings. You have more channels, you can even get 64 channels in one single channel. A really engineering way of thinking of, of signal flow. There are so many ways of making it your own. The cleaning style of Reaper is probably not the easiest to flow with, it's probably not the fastest to get your hands on, and I'll leave you the two channels that I think are the best reference on Reaper right now, that are Kenny Goya, that are the Reaper blog, and Reaper Mania. They both contain any single question you might think of, they have already a video on it, so you might want to check them out. There are some other channels that are rising with great popularity in, within the Reaper community, such as Let's Talk About Reaper, and you can check them out because they have so many videos that I'm not going to even try make the videos that they already made. I'm trying to do something different with my, with my own content. And if you ever have a client that says, oh, you're using Reaper, that simply doesn't sound right. You can just pull the prank of changing it to a Pro Tools skin and let them make their call and bluff it out. You can also <laughs> make it look as logic if you want to. For those that like to see the mixer in a console and really like this kind of way of interacting, there are a couple of skins where you can actually see more of a console mixer. This might work better in two screens instead of just one. I think it's too much information and I'd rather keep it simple. So for me, Smooth 6 is the way to go. You just custom your colors a little bit and you have all that you need. And if that's not enough, making it your own is so easy because you have a couple of things that are called extensions and the rear pack where you can even make a set of rules that whenever the dog reads a certain name of a track, it makes the color happen. It colors a track just as you told it to, the same for markers, the same for different things, and it really saves time and it always looks the way you want it to look. Point number three, the community support is amazing. I'm part of a Discord channel and I'm happy to be there where we constantly answer questions all the time and we are helping out each other. If that's not enough, then you can access the Reaper stash to look for new custom actions, for FX chains, for effects, for themes, for new things. If that's not enough, the forum is amazing. The, the, the community is always helping each other out. So you will never be left out with just a question. And the subreddit on Reaper also has really nice community and they are always helping each other out. Community is one of the things that makes Reaper what it is. Number four, anything that you're trying to do in Reaper is called an action. So you can just use actions, for example, explode, where you split left and right channels into new tracks and it auto routes them to the same channel that you just made. So it's easier to solve an issue. If that wasn't enough, you have the usual peak display that you have in any other dog where it's one single color all the time, but I really like using spectral peaks. This gives me a lot of information of what the content within the track is. And you can see how the wavelength and the frequency is related to the color, so I can see easily 
the kicks and this is probably a hi-hat or a snare and you can let yourself like just flow with the colors and what you're listening and not putting way too much attention on the visual aid and if that wasn't enough there's another displayed mode that's called spectrogram and the spectrogram is precisely what it sounds like you can see a spectral analysis of the sound you can even do spectral edits to the sound you're working with so I can insert a spectral edit and I can lower the gain of this of a certain noise in a certain frequency or I can compress it or I, or I can gate it and I can work in very very specific ways with the sound I'm dealing with the whole idea of presets has been talked about more than enough but for example we have some custom tracks where you already might have certain plugins, certain envelopes, certain items that help you do certain things like sidechaining something and certain complex routing within several tracks already pre-made and just load that into your project and use it and just move the items, the clips to wherever they need to be and you just use that as an effect. The same works for FX chains and the same works for whole templates of the session, that's nothing new. But the idea of having whole templates for many different situations is really interesting and it sounds natural to me. A couple of natural engineering things that I think are just a given or that should be a given in any DAW are invert polarity buttons on every single channel. And a switch to mono on the output, it just makes it easy. I really like the stock plugins that they have. They might not look the prettiest, for example, the stock EQ might look really not new, but it's highly functional. And if you really don't like this one, you can always use another one that's also stock that resembles much more the path filter one. It doesn't have dynamic bands, so get over it. It doesn't have them, but you have tons of filters to pick from. And it's always nice that you can have them inserted within your mixer or your track panel to the left, so you can always make adjustments on anything. Any stock plugin can be inserted visually within your session. For example, meters for loudness, spectrum analyzers that could also live within your session. And you can just have a small reference of what's going on. I, I think that's helpful and they really don't consume much CPU, so why not have them there? Why not have them there whenever you need to? And on the education side of it, they are really helpful for visualizing certain stuff. For example, let's suppose that I'm trying to teach you about the balance between five different bosses, just as drums, bass, keys, guitars, and brass. So I just hit play, and there they are they are so easy to see and they give so much information at just a glance and they use so so little space within your screen that i think it makes sense and a small extra that i couldn't leave out one of the things that really blows my mind about reaper is the fact that you can edit these things are called media items in reaper instead of clips so i can cut i don't know this part and I can look for, let's suppose for a moment that I have a certain resonance that I don't like there. I can look for a certain EQ and I can just drag it on top of the item and it's inserted in the item. See, it's lit up the FX button. And I can just equalize that, just that. It's another way of thinking something like the audio seat within, within Pro Tools, but this is non-destructive. So you can always go back. Even if you like the, what you have done here, you can just render it and you can always go back to the previous version if you messed up with something. So those are some reasons why I really like Reaper. If you have any reason why you really like Reaper, I, I would like to know, please post it in the comments. If you like this video, I want to know more about music production, audio technology, and some of the concepts that I'm trying to bring as content to you, hit that subscribe, like, and share, and again, just to make it clear, this is not a dog war video. I'm only trying to share with you why sometimes some projects that require some really technical solutions might be easier to work inside of Reaper instead of Ableton Live or maybe other DOS. It includes so many options that I have been working with it for maybe five years now. 
and I keep on finding some amazing, amazing tools. I'm Juanchis and thanks for listening.